Join us on Paranormal M, the channel that takes you beyond the ordinary. If you feel like it, hit that subscribe button, drop a comment, even better, and turn on notifications to explore the realms of the unexplained with our latest intriguing stories. We hope you're ready to question the reality that you know. I got lost in the woods. So when I was like seven or eight, we used to live in Webster, Wisconsin. We lived in a house a little bit wider and longer than a trailer house. No upstairs, just the base floor and a basement. It was a beautiful house with a big area that was just woods. One day my cousin was supposed to be watching my two sisters and I. Said that we could all go play outside so long as we stayed in his sight. But within five minutes, he ran into the woods and told us to keep up. Of course, we listened to him. We ran after him. He disappeared. We couldn't see the house or even the tree line where the woods stopped. We were lost. We started freaking out and crying, and then about half an hour later, a really tall Native American chief came up behind us. They asked us what was wrong and why we were crying and if we were okay or if we're lost. I told him how we were chasing my cousin and how we lost him. We didn't know how to get back home. He smiles and said, Don't worry, sweetheart. I'll make sure you get home safe and sound. Just come to my village and rest for a little bit. Eat some lunch. Play with the children. And when you're ready, you can explain to me where you live. I said, Okay. So we go back to his village. It's a small one in the middle of the woods in a clearing but it had at least 60 people and we ate a stew or something. And it, well, made me draw on the dirt on, like, the road and where our house was, and he smiled. I said, I know, or rather, he said, <laughs> I know exactly where you live. If you want to play for a little bit, that's okay. But I want to get you home before dark. There's a lot of dangers in these woods, like bears, coyotes, and bobcats. Not good for children to be out. So he took us home. He didn't leave the edge of the woods. My mom just was coming out crying, asking where we were, saying she was about to call the cops. We were apparently missing for about four or five hours. She asked us why we left the house without Scotty, a cousin. I said, he was with us and he ran into the woods and left us behind. We tried to call for him, but he was gone. Then he came outside and said he had never left the house. He thought we were in our rooms, so I told my mom what happened. She said, we'll just figure it out tomorrow. The next day we went and followed her footprints and found the village, or what used to be a village. There was almost nothing there, and there used to be a gorgeous place, and now it was just ash. It had all been burned down. The grass, which had been shorter the day before, now stood taller than me. It looked like it was burned down and left vacant for hundreds of years. We called out for them, no response. We found the chief's headdress and a doll made of deer hide and some other kind of cloth as we're about to head back. And then I found a huge eagle feather. It was the size of my arm. It was the most amazing paranormal experience I've ever had. Ghost on Military Base I'm in the Navy, and I currently work on base which encompasses an island called San Clemente Island. The island itself is mostly deserted. It's pretty much untouched. But on the north end of the island is a town, for lack of better words. And that's where the Navy and the contractors live. One night I was headed down to relieve a co-worker from watch. As I'm driving down the road, which is mostly pitch black, I see a figure in the street in my headlights. Naturally, I slam the brakes. I begin cussing a storm because some idiot is walking in the middle of the road at night. Shortly after, however, I notice it isn't a person, but more of a solid shadow. You could make out no features on it, but it had mass, 
and it was human-shaped. It was in the middle of the road, sort of stomping, almost like a weird dance. Then, suddenly, it was gone. Just gone. It didn't fade away, didn't do anything dramatic. Just gone. I freaked out and told a lot of my coworkers who didn't believe me. Never saw it again. I've heard stories of people on the island having doors in their work area open and stuff on their own, but no story similar to mine. I don't know much about the history of the island itself, but I do know at some point it was owned by Native Americans, and often remains of them are found or unearthed, often buried with the remains of foxes. Ask Reddit. Ghosts have always gravitated toward me. I used to live in an apartment that was redone. It was redone because of a fire and somebody had died because of it. I had no clue that the apartment I lived in had this death. I happened to choose the room where the woman passed. The whole time I'd lived there, I'd get shaken awake at 7.30 every weekday morning. I'd look and see no one and go back to sleep and immediately get shaken again. I'd look and again I'd see no one. Then I would try to sleep. Then I would get shaken even harder. I'd get up and go to the couch. At 8 a.m. I'd get shaken again. Go back to bed, go back to sleep. I worked nights as a dishwasher, so 7.30 and 8 was way too early for me. When my girlfriend moved in with me, that's when I realized it was a woman who died in the room, at least when that fire happened. Mostly because after my girlfriend moved in, I'd still get shaken awake every weekday morning at 7.30 and 8, but my girlfriend wouldn't. Women get changed together all the time, so having my girlfriend in the room was fine to this ghost, but not to me. And 30 minutes is just enough time for a woman to get ready for work after her shower. We figured she liked us because we'd start to hear a disembodied laugh every now and then. Not a bad laugh, a genuine, that's funny, laugh. Spooked everyone who heard it at first, but we got used to it after a while. Then one day my girlfriend invited my ex-girlfriend over. No biggie. They were friends. My ex and I agreed after a troubled relationship that we're better friends. That female ghost hated my ex. The room would get cold whenever my ex came by, and she'd heard angered growls. Just my ex, by the way. One night when they were getting ready to head out to the bar, my ex took a shower at the apartment because it was better than hers. She comes out of the bathroom white as a ghost and scared. Didn't you hear me yell? She asked us. Thought you guys were fucking with the light in the bathroom. It kept going on and off, and I could hear the switch. Then the water goes ice cold and I could see the outline of a hand going past the shower head. No, not a word came from the bathroom. I guess the ghost doesn't like you. You didn't say anything about a ghost here, my ex said sternly. How can you live like this? Oh, well, she loves us. We make her laugh, I said. Really? All I hear are growls and I'm here. Explains why it gets cold when you come by, my girlfriend said. Thought you had no heat. Heat bills paid. It only happens when you're here. I said, fine, I won't come anymore. She clearly hates me, my ex said. She never went back to the apartment. After that, it went back to normal. Every weekday, I'd get shaken awake at 7.30 to 8. The disembodied laugh came back. Then a year later, we moved out. I'm fairly certain the ghost came with us because my roommate who lived with us said it was too quiet and the apartment door stopped opening and closing on its own at eight on weekdays. I had no clue about the door to the hall until he said that. The Mimic 
so I'm 20 years old and getting married to my fiance in October. I know the house across the street from us is haunted, and we maybe stirred the spirits up doing a little spooky ghost investigation, but me and my best friend have both seen something dark. I'm a Christian, and I do believe in the paranormal. One day when my fiancé was at work, I heard what sounded like my soon-to-be brother-in-law's voice from the living room. It sounded like him saying my name and asking if I was downstairs. Me and my fiancé live in a basement apartment, by the way. And that really wasn't abnormal because he would come sit down and ask me questions. So I answered with, yeah. What it is is just, well, no response. But I did hear what sounded like the screen door closing, so I thought maybe he left. I got up to investigate. There was nobody there. I called my soon-to-be mother-in-law and she asked him if he can come downstairs and the scary thing is, he said he hadn't been down there at all. I know what I heard and it sounded exactly like him. It's not the scariest part though. Yet another day, my fiancé was in the restroom and I saw him go in there and heard the door close as I'm on the couch. Not even a few minutes later out of the corner of my eye, I see what looks exactly like him. Except tall and, well, he had gray sleep shorts on and a shirt standing outside of the bathroom. Which admittedly I thought was weird because I hadn't heard the door close. So I look up, but he's not there. And a few minutes later, he comes out from the bathroom. My best friend was over and it was time to go to sleep, so I was just praying when I thought I heard her whisper my name. Thusly, I stopped praying. I ask her what she wanted, but she swears to me she never said a word. One day she's in the shower and the water's running, but I wasn't paying much attention. I wasn't even able to hear the water running or stop, and out of the corner of my eye I see what looks like her curly hair in her tie-dye shorts, and in one of her shirts, and again... I know for a fact she's in the shower. So I look up to say something to her and she's not there a few minutes later out. She just comes from the bathroom again. Another day I'm sitting at the table eating. My fiancé goes to the restroom and I hear the door close. I just keep eating. I kid you not, I thought he was still behind me because it felt like someone was standing behind me looking over my shoulder. But when I turn to give him a kiss, there's nobody there. So I shrug and go back to being on my phone, when yet again, I swear I saw what looked like him in the, this black shirt and wool pants. He walked toward our bunny cage, but when I look up, there's nobody there. Another time, my best friend was over. She comes screaming out of the bathroom, telling me to hurry and go upstairs. Once we get up there... She tells me she got out of the bathroom and saw what looked like a seven or eight foot tall black shadow that ducked. Whatever this thing is, it mimics my loved ones and I don't like it. I was in bed and I saw the same shadow she was talking about next to the bed. Covered my head and hid. Don't blame me. I don't know what this thing is, but whatever it is, it isn't good. I think my great-grandmother spoke to me after she passed. I received the news a little under a week ago that my great-grandmother had passed away the night prior. She lived in California. I live in Pennsylvania. She died at 7.30, which would be 10.30 my time. This is important. My dad had just moved closer to my mom's house, so transitioning me and my sister would be easier. For a couch, temporarily, we're using like a giant bean bag. Now you've gotten a little insight, it's time for the actual story. My sister and I had been laying in a bean bag at night just sitting on our phones. I'd been looking through YouTube looking for a video, not playing anything. And my sister was watching TikTok and it was some song, I don't know which one, but just a song and some video. Around 10.30ish, maybe a minute or two over 10.30, I heard a female's voice whisper into my ear, Hey. I asked my sister if she said my name, and she just didn't. 
I then asked if it was her video, and she said no to that as well. So I was confused, but I guess I really thought nothing of it because I hadn't gotten the news yet. The next morning I got the news, and I asked my dad when she passed. Sure enough, it was around the same time I heard the voice. I waited a little bit later to tell him what I heard, because it didn't feel like it would be appropriate time for that sort of thing. I never really knew her that much on a personal level, at least besides phone calls and very vague memories from when I was young. Even though I didn't know her that much, I did know she was a caring nice lady who loved talking to her great-grandchildren. Weird Experiences I'm not religious, and I don't really believe in ghosts, etc. But I have had some weird experiences. When I was about 14, I lived in a house with my mother and younger sister. It was a pretty standard three-bedroom house on a quarter-acre section in town. I was sitting in the lounge one day watching TV with my mother and my sister. Or, excuse me, with my mother. Comma. My sister was not home, but her bed door, that was to the right beside the TV, opened as we watched. The lever handle pushed down and the door swung open by itself, with nobody else in the house. We just looked at each other like, what the hell? Other instances in the house followed. My mother came into my bedroom one day, white as a ghost, saying that she had bent over to put food in the cat's bowl and someone or something had growled in her ear right behind her. That's when she turned around and she was yet again alone. I had one of those old 80s tower stereos in my room. It started turning on in the middle of the night, and it was waking me. Just the turntable on top would start spinning and the light on the side would come on. I unplugged the stereo and it did it again another night with no power source. I also woke to find a black shape standing over the bed one time. In the end, my mother had enough, got a priest in to do something. He wandered round burning something and praying for memory. We never had any issues after that. We did find out from a neighbor afterwards that the woman who had the house before us used to have people round at night and they would put sheets on the clothesline, shine car lights on them and dance around. Apparently, they also killed a goat and buried it in the backyard. Good times in Upper Hut. Faceless Head Looking at Us I live with my girlfriend and our three kids. Our house is two floors. The second is the rooms, and the first floor is the living room, bathroom, kitchen, and a small hall that's behind our living room. Now, what's happening is, I'm a firefighter. That means I work at shifts, and I have to work at night. When I'm at home, everything is calm. One day or two, we hear strong noises, like beating on something, bags falling out of nowhere. It's rare, but happens in the first floor, me and my girlfriend feel a very strong and negative sense from the bathroom. Not only the bathroom, but also the hallway. I mostly close the bathroom door, and for me, it works a bit to get more at S. Okay, sometimes I feel that someone is watching my back. At night, when everyone's asleep, I'm feeling so strong that I turn off the TV and go upstairs. Now, the worst part, most of the activity happens at night and when I'm at work. My girlfriend and my kids feel really scared to go to the bathroom or the one floor that they say they feel watched and a sense of dread. Me and my girlfriend don't talk about this stuff with the kids around, so it's strange that they see the same things. My girlfriend says that sometimes when she turns around, she sees in the hallway or in the dark a small head Something small and pure black and faceless. It's always watching her, she says. She even says that she saw a reflection of that when the TV's turned off out of nowhere. My older kid also has this saying that he says he sees a black head in the corners watching him. 
and how never heard us talking about er and one night in the three of them woke up at night having a nightmare. At the same time the three of them screamed like hell. That was after they woke up, because they said they saw a big shadow in the middle of the room. Me and my girlfriend woke up with the screams, turned on the lights and saw nothing. They managed to sleep with our presence. The middle one is scared so much that he pees in the bed instead of going to the bathroom at night or to use. Last night I was at work and now arriving at home. My girlfriend said that she was in our bed with her older kid talking. And apparently out of nowhere my girlfriend said that she saw a small shadow jump to the bed of the older kid. Our older kid saw it too and said to her, See, I told you there was a shadow watching us. That's when she had straight chills and also told me during the night downstairs they could hear strong knocking. At 3 a.m. our younger kid screamed in panic. She said that saw a blackless, faceless head and some hands in the corner of the stairs that leads downstairs. At 7 a.m. she screamed again, saying that the black shadowy head was now top of her watching what the face was a she my girlfriend said that the head is really common but it's also watching them and once spotted it goes away sorry about that that writing is crazy but i trust that they are not next The building in the WEHO. In 1999, I started working as a designer at 8,500 Holloway Drive. It's now an empty lot, but it used to have two buildings, formerly homes in the 20s. At some point, I was told that it was a brothel. In the 60s, it was owned by psychologists who allegedly held LSD parties with the hippies and rockers that hung out at Barney's Beanery down the street. Supposedly, Jimi Hendrix crashed there. The two buildings were connected by a bridge that my bosses and former building owners built. The main building had a basement-type area where the design team worked. The main floor had been renovated to accommodate a conference room and boss's office and a teeny room for the assistant and an office space that was rented to a PR agency. The quote-unquote basement had a back door that opened to the backyard space with an even lower area that an artist rented for a studio in a giant old avocado tree. The second building's lower area was rented to a photographer. The main level floor functioned as photo studios, kitchens, and another computer room. The second building was avoided by everyone, no one liked being in it. It was uncomfortable. It felt anxious. And it was always cold. But the area where I was, the design dungeon, as we jokingly called it, is where I experienced several things I still can't explain. Everyone joked that it was haunted because of its weird past. Things like that were found in storage, like specimen jars of things. That didn't help. I laughed along with the rest. I didn't think much of it until one night I stayed late. I was using the production table to cut and glue a present for my boyfriend. It got late as I was distracted and lost track of time. Started hearing footsteps upstairs. Hmm, I wonder who came back. As I checked the clock, it was 9 p.m. I started cleaning up my things, but then the footsteps started getting louder was right above my head. Then I heard the telltale sound of my boss's chair creaking and rolling across the wood floor. So I yelled up the stairs, Hello? The noise stopped. I went back to my task, thinking I was being silly and imagining things. The footsteps started walking around. I ran up the stairs and yelled out, Who's there? This isn't funny. I looked into the dark offices and stood still waiting for someone or something to move. I'm losing it. I went downstairs to finish cleaning up. 
the footsteps started running back and forth at the front door and over to my head repeatedly. I left everything where it was. I raced up the stairs and out the door, setting the alarm as fast as possible. Then I waited for a couple of minutes in the parking spots for someone to come out. But no one came. The parking spots were empty except for me. I brushed it off for weeks. I was tired or something. Then one day everybody goes outside for a break. I needed to finish something and stayed at my computer. The next thing I know, a woman's voice whispered into my left ear in a throaty, seductive tone. I'll be right back. I spun around so fast to see nothing behind me. Jumped out of my chair, I ran outside and saw my co-workers. You okay? You're pale. The buildings are gone now, so I hope whatever was there moved on too. Me and my friend both saw a figure walk past us at the same time. Me and my friend have ancestors who've lived in the city for over a hundred years in the same neighborhood as the place of this incident. Me and my lifelong friend were waiting to go into a club. We were standing outside of a candy factory that's existed for around a hundred years. There were vents pumping out hot air. So me and my friend and a few other people who we knew were standing in the heat because it was very cold out. We left our jackets in the car. I was talking to a girl leaning up against the wall of the factory. And they were talking to a few other people on the opposite side of the sidewalk. All of a sudden, we both snapped our heads to the area in between us. We're both from the city and we're very situationally aware. I had seen a figure walk past us quickly. When we both looked around to either side of us, nobody was in sight. I remember the figure being about my height, five foot eight, having a hat on, although I'm not sure if it was just the motion or an actual vision. I wasn't going to say anything, but then my friend says, What the fuck? Did you just see that? Then he described a person much shorter than him walking past us. He's six foot two. He also said he couldn't see their face, which makes sense if he was looking from above at a person wearing a brimmed hat. I'm a very logical person, and could have justified me seeing a figure, but the fact that his description matched what I saw, and the fact that we both reacted to it at the exact same moment, has left me questioning everything. What could that have been? Could what we saw have been a ghost? Or is it some sort of rift in time that humans don't understand because surly people have been walking in that path, huddling next to the heat, next to the factory for a hundred years? Maybe that affected the energy in that location. What exactly did I see? Shadow people? Ghosts? I've been trying to figure out what exactly it was that happened. And I saw something. I've tried to Google this numerous times, and the only thing that comes close to explaining the encounter is what they call shadow people. This is 100% facts. I really need to know what the fuck happened. It wasn't only me who witnessed it. I was with two of my friends, and when it happened... We all looked at each other simultaneously, as if confirming as if we all witnessed and saw the same thing. Okay, so here's the story. It was January 2012. The house I was living in burned down out of nowhere. The boiler just exploded. This is a whole other story in and of itself. I don't want to sidetrack and get off topic, but yeah. My family was living in the hotel because they had the insurance. My dog had just given birth the day before, and thank God all the puppies survived, but yeah, I would go to my house every day to make sure it was clean and they had food. I was with two of my friends and we were all just talking, standing next to each other. That's when all of a sudden, and this wasn't like it's in the movies where you see ghosts and it's like a human form, this was more like a gas slash smoke type of black darkness. It came from one side of the room to the other in less than a blink of an eye. I'm talking about so fast it was like a black cloud of smoke and it was like a very, very dark black. 
I don't know how, I just don't know how to explain it, but it wasn't like a humanoid figure. That's why I don't want to say it was a ghost. But it was definitely something that was not normal. There wasn't any smoke, nor was there anything like fire that would cause this to happen. It just happened out of nowhere and went from one side of the room to the other. When it happened, we all looked at each other and we were all just stunned and speechless. And to this day, my two friends don't even like to bring it up. They like to get freaked out. This is why I tried to give the short version of the story. But anyways, you remember in the beginning of the story how he said the house caught fire and whatever. Well, basically, I'm going to tell you the whole story. My parents got divorced, right? I'm not one to believe this in Spanish. It's called brujeria. English, they call it voodoo or witchcraft. But I know myself, that's part of the family that they used to dabble in that. And right after they get divorced, everything, like everything, went down here. Especially for, like, my mom's side of the family. Well, my side of the family, basically. Like, first of all, of my dog, and first thing that happened was, like, my dog got sick out of nowhere. Like, from one day to the next. What's it called? He just stopped eating. I would have to open his mouth and stuff bread down his throat so he would eat. He wouldn't want to eat at all to the point where I just put them down then my dad got sick. Ended up losing about 50 pounds in three weeks. Nobody knew what was wrong with him. Turns out he had an autoimmune disease. And, yeah, like, every, like, a bunch of weird stuff started happening and then out of nowhere the house caught on fire. Like, the boiler exploded. Yeah, like, I'm convinced that there was a curse. Whatever, I don't like to really bore that up because it makes it sound like, like, Hollywood story. Two likes in a row, brutal. Whatever, but yeah, like, you know, what I'm saying, especially the thing with the, with the black shadow things, whatever you want to call it. If anyone has any similar experiences like this or knows what this is, please let me know. And this is something serious. Please, if you don't have anything nice to say, please don't say that at all. Because I'm really trying to find out what happened. Otherworldly Symbolism Slash Messages I am an addict. I've been an addict since I hit puberty. And I use substances to cope with the feelings that I experience. I've been diagnosed with schizoaffective disorder, which I think is schizophrenia. And I have an avoidant personality disorder. I avoid conflict, and I also have generalized anxiety disorder. I've struggled with the Christian faith for quite some time. 23 now. And I revoked it at 13. And I have re-experienced it many times trying to gain some comfort. I simply cannot believe in the tales that are told. It is not all worldly, and I believe it is fantasy. Ever since I denounced my faith for the last time, things have been ever so the same. Nothing has changed whether I pray or not. With all that said, I've had experiences with the otherworldly a few times. I bought a Ouija board. It was themed to Stranger Things. I bought this at Target. I began to use it at my mom's house in my room, a four-bedroom house. I used it with candles and the crystals that I saw fitting. I met a spirit named Rurs, a female, claiming to be a Native American who died on the foundation of the house in the 1800s. She was kind and helpful. No malevolence there. There was also another male spirit, not as kind, who misled and pretended to be other entities from what I made of it. I banished him with the black obsidian, requested to only talk to Rurs from here on out. He didn't come back. I tore the Ouija board into three pieces and put it away for a long time. Flash forward to years later. We lived in an apartment, a shady one, before my firstborn was born. There was a closet that I saw a void, a distinct void of black and darkness. Starry apparitions. The mist when the closet was open, 
was a one-bedroom apartment with no door, a simple studio claiming to be a one-bedroom with no door to the bedroom. And this closet creeped me out. I felt negative and repulsive energy when I was in there, like the entities who resided there wanted to slowly kill me with agonizing pain, wanted me out immediately. We kept diapers and wipes in there from the baby shower until she was born. I also kept marijuana in there. We moved from this location in about eight mows flash forward again in another place. It's like the utmost mysterious. This is the place that has circuitry problems and another slum, but it's what we call home. The numbers three and six are common occurrences here. In the beginning, nothing seemed out of the ordinary. A two-bedroom duplex with one bathroom and a small kitchen. Things began happening one by one. My son, whom I believe has been tortured by spirits, is one year old. Every time I would pray or preach or read the word of God, he would bellow out, crying in agony. When have since taken him to the ER twice, and seen a specialist, and is due for further testing, but throws his guts up after eating certain foods. But every time I would read the word of God, his problems began, as if claws were piercing his abdomen, based on his screams of pain lasting for upwards of an hour at a time, and always happening in his sleep. I also used to have a habit of using drug IV. I stopped after my firstborn cold turkey and felt great about it during our time in the home with the closet. But I returned to it years later out of desperation when nothing was filling the void anymore. The very first time I went to use a needle, the third bathroom light flickered and went out. There are three lights in the bathroom, and every time I would get angry at my partner for not cleaning up and being irresponsible, not treating me like a lover, usually the third light would flicker in the bathroom. This is after, while high as a kite one day. I took out the New Testament I had and began to open page by page what I felt God told me to say and scream. I shouted at the Spirit Scripture in my kid's room. The very next time I entered the room, I no longer felt that dark, observing, stalking energy, and the room simply appeared brighter. My kids have been sleeping less, and my son has not had another gastro attack in his sleep while sleeping in there. Commonly, it's at like 1 or 3 a.m. Now at the bathroom. I've left it there. If they want to reside in the bathroom, so be it. I don't have the faith to cleanse this home, and I have called two churches to come do a cleansing, but they just won't do it. I still feel a creepy, watchful presence every time I take a shit. <laughs> they told me to work on myself, and I suppose they will not feed off of my hatred so I did. I began exercising regularly, eating very right, and stopped taking my anger out on the ones I love. And simply put, the lights no longer flicker. They don't even go out. I've cast out IV and drugs from my life completely. Congrats. So, with all of that said, this morning, typing this at 8 a.m. on a Sunday, I heard a beeping. A beeping that continued six times. I counted the beeps. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six beeps. It was the oven at 7 a.m. The holy number. The oven has never done that before. I believe it is a spirit in purgatory sentenced to hell, or a demon in hell crying out. Six, 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 six. The mark. And the oven, the flames. The flames that will not be put out. Why else would they target the oven? The burning, the heat. The only thing they could allude to to send a message when manipulating the electricity. Let it be known that the oven has not done this ever in the years that we've lived here. What does all this mean? I don't know. That's why I'm asking the most trusted site there is about this. And then letting the most trusted channel speak it. I don't believe in the teachings of Christianity, but I certainly believe in evil and helping entities alike. I went to check the oven and it hadn't been on reset, but 
nothing else on that electrical line or breaker has been touched. I no longer believe in coincidences. If it's too good to be true, it must be spiritual and you should immediately find out who's doing what. I've set up a demeanor, prayers, scripture, emotions, and willpower against anything that would hurt my children. I recommend everybody does some studying on crystals, energies, and entities so that way they have a lesser influence on your life. I've been in psychotic states in which I've done things that I would never do. I've attempted suicide three times in this place alone. Does that say anything about the energies that inhabit it? The previous residence had hundreds of roaches and was a serious druggie who had people in and out so bad that the next door neighbor set up a camera. Needles were found everywhere. If anybody wants to share serious thoughts about this topic, please do so. I just want to congratulate you for turning your life around. My ghost story from when I was a kid living in a haunted house. When I was 12, my family and I lived in a tiny house on the corner of South 11th Street in Copperas Cove, Texas. Things were normal most of the time, but we started having weird experiences. My mom would get the strong smell of flowers and things would go missing or be moved. One night when I was up late watching Nick at Night, my television, this was probably in 2000 or earlier 2001, I saw a figure in my doorway. It was propped up by my elbow and my feet were pointed at my door. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw something move. I looked at my doorway. It was a black mist, but I could clearly make out a head and shoulders. Kind of just faded into nothing for the rest of the body. It was turned with its side to me and was walking toward my bathroom door. And that door was perpendicular to my bedroom door. They touched and made like a square shape. It stopped walking and turned to me. I could see its shoulders square and I looked, well, it looked like something was standing facing me. We sat there both looking at one another for what seemed like forever before it turned back to my bathroom door and walked into the bathroom. When I got up to investigate, nothing was there. I wasn't scared. It had a very good energy and felt almost as if it was there to protect me. A few months after this happened, my father got on post hunting, and we moved to Fort Hood. Its name has recently changed, but it was Fort Hood at the time. After living there for a few months, weird things started happening in my room. The lights would flicker, my TV would turn on and off randomly, sometimes spending minutes just turning off and on. One night I was sitting on the edge of my bed watching TV, and I had just finished eating. I placed my plate and fork on top of the TV and was just minding my own business when the fork flew off the plate at my face, landed beside me on my bed. Needless to say, I was absolutely freaked out. I had been expressing all the weird things to my best friend. She told me I needed to tell whatever was there to get out. But I felt weird about that until one day it was fucking with my TV. I stood in the middle of my room and no one was home but me and I screamed. Get the fuck out of my room. Leave me the fuck alone. Over and over again. Panic in the woods. Or something more sinister. This morning... I, a 33-year-old female, and my best friend, a 34-year-old female, took our children and dogs to the woods for some fresh air. We live in the UK, down south. It's a woods that we've both been to often. Right off the bat, there was an atmosphere in the air. Both dogs seemed on edge. My dog more so, often whimpering and barking, which is unlike her. My daughter, four, stayed glued to my side the entire walk while my friend's twins, which were both seven, ran ahead of us. There are two paths into the woods, a high path and a low path. Below the low path, there's a valley. As we walked along the low path, the twins decided to climb the steep slope to reach the top path. Something they've always done many times, by the way. 
my friend's dog wound up joining them. While at the top of the slope, the twins said that they heard some pigs. This isn't uncommon as there are pigs that roam the woods often. Within seconds, the twins had gone, completely out of sight. This is not typical of her children. They are adventurous, but have never left our eyesight before. My friend frantically shouted for them, but we couldn't see or hear them at all. My friend in a panic attempted to climb the slope to no avail. Deep in the valley below us, we heard a dog screaming in pain. It sounded like a dog had got itself trapped in a snare of some sort. My friend stopped her attempt at climbing the hill and started shouting for her dog, who we both thought was the dog that was screaming. The screaming of the dog became more intense, so much so that my friend then attempted to climb down the hill onto the valley to help what we thought was her dog. In the corner of my eye, I saw some movement, and it was her dog walking toward us from the direction her twins were last seen. As soon as we saw her dog, the screaming in the valley stopped dead. A woman then appeared on the top of the slope and shouted to us that the twins were making their way back down the path toward the beginning of the woods. We shouted back, thank you, to the lady, and my friend told me that she would run ahead to find the twins. We both looked up to where the lady was stood, and she was just gone. We both looked around to see where the lady may have gone, but couldn't see her. From the direction she was standing, only a moment ago, approximately 50 deer ran straight past us into the valley below into the direction of the screaming dog. My friend then ran ahead to find her twins, leaving me with her dog, my dog, and my four-year-old. As I continued my walk toward the beginning of the woods, I heard rustling amongst the foliage in the valley next to me. I looked down and saw five deer running past me in the direction of the other large group of deer. I lifted my daughter so she could see the deer for herself. As I placed her on the floor, I heard a noise in the valley, but very close to me it sounded like a person making an old phone ring, like that brrrr sound. I stop and I look into the trees, but I couldn't see anything. As I turned away to continue my walk, the same sound started again and stopped the moment I looked over. At this point, both dogs were behaving extremely nervously and continuously checking behind us. This was as I was trying to pull them forward. I can't explain why, but I just knew my daughter wasn't safe. Whatever was happening in those woods, whoever it was, or whatever it was, was trying to separate us all. I ignored the sound and continued walking toward the start of the woods as quickly as I could whilst dragging my daughter and the dog on their leads. As I walked around the corner, I saw my friend who had found her twins. The twins both looked very pale in the face and said that they were very scared. They had told us that they were, well, they began to sing in the woods because they were, you know, stood still. And they could hear twigs and leaves breaking all around them. They said that they came across a lady with a face that they recognized, but her face was really shiny. She told them to walk down the path. They said they recognized the woman from their school. And I do feel the need to add that both myself and my friend would recognize anyone from that school. Neither of us recognized that lady. They also said they could hear us shouting them, and they did shout back. But we couldn't hear them. We both heard all the sounds. We both saw the lady. We both had the immense feeling that we were all being separated. But neither of us can explain what happened or why it happened. We've been Googling it, and the only suggestion is something called panic in the woods. But we, but we both experience the same thing. Encounter with a stranger who seemed to know who I am. I had a peculiar experience about seven years ago. I've frequently gone back to it thinking about, well, never been able to figure out what exactly it was that happened. So I was about 16 or 17 years old at the time. I'd been on my lunch break from college and I was walking through the town center, making my way back from my next class. There's a big church in the middle of the town where I had to walk through. 
There are often people standing near the church offering people leaflets and preaching and striking up conversations about religion, that sort of thing. Which, by the way, didn't bother me, as long as they're respectful to those who don't want to stop and talk. Anyway, as I was walking past that church, I was stopped by somebody who had, well, they had some leaflets. Didn't think much of it at first, she just seemed like your average middle-aged religious lady, and the things she said to me initially weren't out of the ordinary. She was just asking me if I had a belief in God, and if I attend church, that sort of thing. I politely explained that while I'd love to chat if I had the time, I was actually on my way back to college, so I didn't really have any time, in fact. This is where it got kind of strange. She put her hand on my arm and sort of gripped. Not in a way that felt aggressive, but quite firm is the best way I can describe it. She then looked me in the eyes in a quite intense manner, addressed me by name and said, I know you're hurting. I can see it in your eyes. I was taken aback that she knew my name because one, I'd never met or interacted with her before. Two, I didn't tell her my name. And three, I was alone. So there was nobody around that could have heard anybody saying my name. And lastly, I wasn't wearing my college ID badge or anything else that would have been able, you know, to identify me. I tried to make out that I was completely fine and that I didn't know what she meant. But the truth is, is that I do struggle quite badly with mental health problems, and I was really low at the time. Although I thought I'd been making a decent effort at hiding that and pretending to be happy. She didn't really say much other else, but she did tell me to take care of myself. And off I went to go about my business. My Childhood Paranormal Experiences From the ages of 6 to 10, I had paranormal encounters. My first encounter, I remember, was when we were leaving my mother's nail salon. Her nail salon is connected to my grandmother's house. To get to the salon, you have to walk on a strip from the road to the door, about 10 foot distance. It was around 6 to 7 p.m., I stood at the end of the strip by the road. Across the street was a neighbor's house. Growing up, me and my cousins were scared of this house. Due to how hidden behind the shrubs it was. I stood at the end of the strip and looked across the street into the neighbor's yard. I was a little girl with pale skin, long black hair that covered some of the face and wearing a white gown. I was frozen in fear. I turned to my mother who was coming from locking up the shop. Gecko, and asked her if she was seeing the same thing. I turned my head back. Within five seconds, the little girl was gone. So perhaps she wasn't a little girl, but she had seen one. My second time encountering the spirit was when we moved into a new apartment. Keep in mind that this apartment was very close to a graveyard. I shared a room with my mother, but she didn't have a TV in her room. This is when direct TV was still a thing. So imagine. I put my blankets on the floor in front of the room and just slept and watched TV. I remember I turned my head to the side. Theirs was a vertical type hallway, my mother's bedroom on one side and my sister's room on the next and the bathroom in the middle. This story takes place from ages 8 to 10. And when I tried my head, I just, I'm guessing they meant turned, when I turned my head, I saw the same spirit, but taller, about six feet walking out of my sister's room, then going into my mother's room. I put the blanket over my head and went to sleep. Ever since then, I haven't had an encounter with her again. This story took place in Nassau, in the Bahamas. I thought I'd share what I believe to be my first ghost encounter. During October, cliche I know, of 2023, I was hanging out with a friend. I began asking her some questions tied to the paranormal. The subject has always piqued my interest, and I knew that she had actually had some experiences. So my questions mainly pertained to those, as well as a bit on how she believed the paranormal world worked. 
As I'm aware, viewpoints can vary wildly depending on things such as religion and personal experience. She was more than willing to answer, too, and I eventually asked something well, that had been on my mind for quite some time. You see, one paranormal experience she had was when she and one of her other friends had used a homemade Ouija board, which she claimed had actually worked. So, with my interest in the subject of the paranormal being that of, is it all actually real, I'd asked her if we could do something similar. She agreed, and after gathering the materials, we went out into the American Midwest countryside that we called home. And by about sunset, we arrived at our first location. We had set it up in a truck's bed. I was quite literally trembling with anticipation and fear and a bit of cold. We tried three times, but nothing happened. However, she did mention catching the eye or the reflection of what she claimed was a skinwalker. We also saw the reflection. However, it was too far for myself to confirm what it was because course it was. We were planning to see a movie afterwards, so we left to see that, with the drive there consisting of her sharing more of her paranormal experiences and also quite a bit of talk of skinwalkers. After the movie, we went to a completely different area. This is where the meat and potatoes of this post really happened. We had done the same setup. And I should mention that before we started, I pulled out my camera's flashlight because we were worried whatever we first saw had followed us. I kept it out so we could see what we were doing in the homemade Ouija board. We did the thing, and this time I can't remember if it was the first or second try, but that's irrelevant, because it worked. We had asked the spirit basic questions. Their name is the only one I remember asking, though. As we continued, my fear and dread continued to climb. I began looking around the area with my flashlight, believing to have felt the presence of a human nearby. And I still swear up and down that I heard breathing nearby that wasn't coming from either of us. My friend eventually told me to stop. I could be pointing it at the spirit, and if that I was, doing so could anger it. We eventually said goodbye and left. As she drove me back home, we talked about what happened, and also some extra details about ghost encounters and ghosts in general. With all of that being said, one standout detail I remember her mentioning was that if we saw what would almost look like a dark wall of shadow, where there shouldn't be at least, that was probably a ghost, and to look away from it. She also recommended I stay out of dark areas for a few days, of which I vehemently did. In the end, I'm personally still a bit off the fence about whether or not ghosts and other paranormal beings do really exist. However, after some time to sit on this story and getting the opinions of others, I've come to the conclusion that if they do, their intentions for staying on Earth probably aren't good. However, I'm sure you all won't be surprised to hear that I still have a morbid curiosity about it all. One that, if anything, has probably only grown since that encounter. If I'm being honest, despite my parents' warnings, of whom I told all about this, but if that friend were to invite me to do this again, I probably wouldn't say no. In fact, I again might be the one to ask. Unexplainable Experience Slash spontaneous fires. Five or six years ago, I had a really strange encounter as a teen that I've never been able to explain or make sense of. If anyone has any reasonable explanation for this story, please comment below. Background This story takes place in Raleigh of North Carolina. There's a nature reserve area near my old neighborhood that I used to frequent with friends that became our unofficial hangout slash smoke spot. The nature reserve is called Shank Forest. The area is owned and managed by North Carolina State University, and it's also home to some veterinarian school for horses. It also operates as a teaching and research site for the university's forest management program. 
the land itself has an interesting history prior to it being utilized for university purposes. There was a prison farm on the land pre-1930s. When visiting the area, even prior to this experience, my friends and I always would joke about how the land had a strange energy and feel to it. In the parking area of the reserve, there was a small graveyard and an abandoned house, which certainly further contributes to the interesting vibes. Whenever I, well, I guess however, I just never felt scared or uncomfortable in the space, would often go to the area alone. Here's the actual story. One night I was about to meet up with my friend. We were going to meet at the nature reserve park. She was getting off work that night. I ended up beating her there. And while waiting for her, I parked my car off to the side of the road and turned it around to face the direction in which she would enter the park. Behind me was the graveyard. I could see the area decently well in my rear view and left side mirror. It is important to mention that my car was the only car there and that there were no other humans in sight. The time was just past seven o'clock in middle of October. The sun was almost completely set and it was starting to get dark outside. After arriving to the park, I sat in the car for a few minutes on my phone trying to kill time while waiting for my friend. After sitting there for a moment, something caught my eye in the side mirror of my car. In the graveyard area behind my vehicle, there was a small fire that had started on the ground. My immediate reaction was to get out of the car and to stomp out the flames. That is exactly what I did. I found it a bit odd that this fire had started seemingly out of nowhere but presumed that somebody had tossed a cigarette out just before I'd arrived. The fire was in an area where there were dry leaves on the ground, so this was a plausible explanation at that time. After stomping out the small fire, I got back into my car and continued scrolling on my phone. It was almost completely dark outside at this point, and the sun had gone beneath the horizon. Again, something caught my eye in the side mirror of my car. The fire had seemingly reappeared instantaneously. I immediately presumed that I had failed to put out the first time, got out of my vehicle once again to try to put out those flames. Upon getting out of the car, I quickly realized that this fire was separate from the first one that I had put out. It had started approximately a foot behind where the charred spot and leaves from the first fire were. After realizing that the ground had spontaneously caught fire not once, now two times, in a graveyard at night, I started to get a little creeped out and sped walked back to my car to leave. I didn't bother putting out the second fire. Just as I put the car into drive, I glanced back in my, I glanced back in my rear view to witness a third fire spontaneously start just behind the second fire, of which was still burning. This time I saw the fire begin with my very own eyes. I sped off, left that park as this whole situation made me quite uncomfortable and confused. The next time that I returned to the area after this experience, the ground was still charred in three places in a perfectly vertical line. This occurrence was not a figment of my imagination or delusion, and I've never heard of or experienced anything like this in years after this. Ever since I had this experience, I've been trying to come up with a reasonable explanation for how this could happen. I've just been, well, entirely unable to do so. There were no other humans around, and with the sun being down, there's no plausible way that these fires could have just been brush fires started by direct sunlight. I'm not religious, and I do not actively practice spirituality, but I felt like these spontaneous fires were a sign that I was unwelcome there, or at least at that time. The entire experience has left me confused for years. And if anybody has a scientific explanation or theory to how this could happen, I would love to hear it. Had multiple creepy encounters tonight. About two weeks ago, I was sitting down at home in the living room. For clarity, I don't live alone and I have two cats as well. I felt a gush of air pass by my right arm. 
I thought it was one of my cats, but they were elsewhere entirely. I was also alone in the room. Another week passes by, sleeping in bed when I feel the weight of something push onto me twice. Felt like one of my cats, but again, they were not there. The pressure and weight felt like something was trying to wake me up by my feet, but I was already awake and under the covers. When I flipped my cover to see what it was, nothing was there. I'm the only one who sleeps in my room as well. And fast forward to tonight. I was on my phone when I heard some light and walking and fidgeting with something. I thought one of the cats slipped into my room. So I immediately got up and both of them were out in the living room when I checked to see where they were. I got creeped out and told my sibling about it. They wanted to check the room next to mine, which someone else also sleeps in. But they went out tonight. And for reference, their room always gave off negative energy. So my sibling then checks underneath the door just to see if there's anything. The lights are off, but as soon as they open the door to go in, there's a night lamp that's turned on. So then, not to feel lonely or even more creeped out, we decided to let the cats in that room. They love hanging out in there. They did not want to stay in there tonight, though. At all. So we leave the room light on and close the door. Sibling heads back into the room and I go into the bathroom. And that's when I hear what sounded just like my sibling. So I call out and ask if they said something. They said they didn't. I was so creeped out by now, but I had one more thing to get for my room. So my sibling waited for me. And as I grab what I needed, I hear shuffling coming from the next door and head out. I was left so creeped out by this. Forgot to mention, by the way. This morning I also heard a baby cry twice. And that's in the room where there's no one next to mine. I need some advice. I think my house is haunted, and I don't know what to do. Hey guys, I'm coming here for some advice. Mostly because I feel some sort of dreadful presence in my house. And specifically in my kitchen. And in the living room. They aren't separated. Sort of like the same room. I'm 20, and I live just with my mom. I don't really know where to start, but I've had multiple different physical things happen in my kitchen while I'm home. And let me also say I moved into this house not even a full two years ago, and I've never had previous encounters with anything paranormal. I guess I'll run down the list of encounters starting with the first one and leading up to the most recent. Instance 1. Maybe about two or three months after I moved in. My mom, whose bedroom is on the first floor, she said she woke up at about 3 a.m. to wind chimes making noise in her kitchen. She walked out there and actually saw them moving. My mom loves wind chimes, and before this she always had some inside. We took them down after this. Instance 2. This was the first event I actually saw with my own eyes. Last winter, maybe about November 2022, sitting with my ex-girlfriend on the couch watching TV in the living room. We had been there for maybe 35 or 45 minutes. That's when out of nowhere my lunchbox flies off the top of the refrigerator and lands on the floor about five feet in front of it. I paused the show and I was freaking out since the only people home at the time were me and her. So I picked it up and put it back on top of the fridge. My ex was already freaked out, so we both ran upstairs. Not sure if this is important or not, but afterwards I told my sister, who is well-versed with pagan witchcraft practices, to read tarot cards regarding the situation. A few times she pulled cards with cats playing on them. She told me the spirit is likely a dead pet that wants somebody to play with. She also did some sort of sage ritual at this time as well. Instance 3. This happened two days ago. It was the second thing I actually saw with my own eyes. I have a home gym and sometimes I'll work out after work. Two days ago I was home alone working out in the basement. When I finished I walked upstairs to the kitchen to make my protein drink and eat some strawberries. Creepy feeling as always in that room, but I try to ignore it. So I was standing at the kitchen sink, rinsing off strawberries and eating them. 
I looked up out the window, and that's behind the sink. It was completely dark in my backyard, and I couldn't see anything but the reflection of the room behind me. When I looked up, I saw what appeared to be a blurry black figure moving very quickly from one side of my living room behind me to the other. I couldn't make out any features because I only saw for about half a second. I don't even know if I really had any at all. And I mean fast, like the same speed of a human full sprinting from one side of my living room to the other. I turned around and there was absolutely nothing there. At this point I'm freaking out and I start saying shit like, Whatever you are, you are not welcome here. And you need to leave. This is my house. I live here and I don't want you here. You need to go. Then I walked upstairs and laid in my bed until my mom got home mostly because I don't get this eerie, creepy feeling when there's somebody else home. I showered, and then I went to bed. Instance 4 After Instance 3, I debated not saying anything to my mom because I don't want to freak her out since she sleeps on the first floor. Last night, I decided I'd tell her, though. She was understandably a little freaked out. And this morning, my mom calls while I'm at work and tells me that she herself was withholding experiences from me because she also didn't want to freak me out. My mom runs a small business out of that part of the basement, and that's located directly underneath the kitchen and living room. She told me that she has at least a dozen times heard footsteps in the kitchen above her walking around, and she's usually sure that she's the only one home. Apparently, this is why she plays her music so loud when she's down there. And from my phone call with her this morning, I learned she got in contact with some people from her church, and soon she'll be having somebody who specializes in spirits come take a look. Instance 5 I'm not entirely sure if this was in my head or an actual encounter because I was tripping on shrooms. Not my first time, so I know it function. About a month ago, I decided to trip in my house, and my current girlfriend and two other friends were there. For the majority of the trip, we stayed upstairs watching cool TV shows. The Midnight Gospel on Netflix highly recommended. I had to go downstairs to piss, so I went down by myself. I swear that while I was coming down the stairs, I saw what looked to be a woman's face smiling in an unsettling way at me from the couch. I had some laundry on the couch, and I saw the face vividly in the laundry. This actually disturbed me, and I sprinted to the bathroom to piss then sprinted back upstairs for the rest of the night. And then the narrator sprinted to go to bed. See ya.